I can tell you I was getting excited just doing this video. Fantastic. This is the new Brutale 1000RR. And this is the new Rush 1000. Both incredibly beautiful bikes that stand out certainly amongst all its rivals. And I put them side to side. You can see actually mechanically, engine wise, they are identical. In fact, they are identical mechanically and dynamically. The only difference is some of the admonishments on the bike. And if you look on the Rush, what stands out is that rear wheel and that very tiny pillion seat <laughs> and the way the exhausts are set up fantastic bikes the rush is just a little bit more expensive and a little bit more exclusive oh quick insertion edit here now as you may know i went up to power slides motorcycles in stoke to pick up my unregistered limited edition uh, dragster rr pirelli and would you believe it, Brad kindly said, would you like to go on my new Blue Charlie 1000 Double R? Well, <laughs> who was I to refuse? Fabulous bike. One of the ones I was doing this special MV presentation about. So I took the chance and grabbed it. And uh, well, here we go. Right, here we go. Brutale 1000 RR. One of the sexiest bikes there is. Just let it uh, obviously do all its uh, checks. Yeah. Obviously, as soon as that comes on, it goes to ride. Yep. Comes good in. No errors found. Clutch in. Go <laughs> there, wall up a little bit. On the we've got the arrows just on, which doesn't come uh, as standard. Yeah. Nervous? Not me. Uh... Unfortunately, all well, the recording was done on my phone, so I have to make do of a picture of the bike and me explaining it. Now, initially, I thought the bike was actually pretty tall. Uh, it's 33 plus inches to the seat. That's 845 millimeters or so. So it can be a little bit disconcerting if you're shorter. My God, even going along very quickly, you find you're leaning forward at quite an angle. So I felt by the end of the ride, my arms and wrists were getting a really strong workout. And that was difficult for me because I've got very little upper body strength due to for various reasons. Um, I think it's something you get used to for absolutely sure. But the bike strikes me as a short to medium term blast super cruise missile. And uh, <laughs> just a quick mention, of, I just reminded by looking at it. I mean, forget about pillions. I mean, yes, you could perch a small little arse on that seat. But quite frankly, once you get about seven, eight thousand revs, anybody is going to fall off the back of that bike. They're going to go flying. This bike has the most ridiculously brutal acceleration. <laughs> it's quite fantastic. Typical of MV anyway, and the way that they set up the engine. Uh, quite incredible. It, high revs up to about 13,000. I didn't get there. And torque finishes at 11. So you're hanging on, really, at that point for grim death. The speed you get on this bike, without even realising, in a matter of microseconds, is astonishing. And uh, just a little bit disconcerting. But my God, you're having a lot of fun getting there. The TFT is perfect. I can see that it's going to filter down to the rest of the lesser MV models. I had one kind of little moment on the bike. Because it's just going so fast. Uh, and the brakes are incredible. Uh, the engine braking was not as strong as I thought. Now the point of this is, it's got incredibly configurable mapping systems. So what you need to do pretty quickly is set up the fantastic Olin suspension and all the mapping properties for your particular riding style. That's really important. You really need to get that right, especially when you're talking about a bike with 208 rampant horses. Okay, they're the negatives. The positives outweigh everything. <laughs> Just sitting on this bike, you feel like $20 million. Riding along on this bike, you feel like an absolute god. Honestly, you feel like Rossi and Marquez and a suit model and a super actor all in one. Honestly, you feel when you stop at a light, women are going to come up to you and possibly men and throw themselves at you, offering you a copious amount of free sex and sexual gratification. This bike 
is a wonder. So let's have a look at some of the video media that MV Augusta was putting out about these bikes. Obviously the history goes back 75 years now. Um, it's one of the most famous brands in, originally in racing terms. It was far ahead of the competitors that you now know and love out there as rivals to the MV Augusta. Obviously these videos are fantastically well made. And it really shows off the lines, the sculpture and the fantastic visual nature of these incredible bikes. Really, MV Augusta is about details. They call it motorcycle art, and it's a strap line that only this company could probably get away with, to be fair. They seem to go to the nth degree to get the details correct. Now, you can really put this down to the fact that they are handmade motorcycles. Only the small niche motorcycle companies out there like Norton would have been handmade motorcycles. MV Augusta still carries that ethos throughout. In fact, every builder individually of each motorcycle, in fact, inscribes its signature on the bikes. Now, one of the issues that people have with MV Augusta is perhaps the lack of dealers and a historical tendency to be slightly unreliable, especially when electronics are involved. Now, this might have been true a handful of years ago, but right now they have come on a huge amount of way and the quality has got substantially better. All of the MV Augusta bike range now employs the latest safety technology, anti-mitigations, liftings, sideways ABS, and both of these bikes, in addition, have the fantastic EC Erlins, as seen on Ducati V4S, which makes them incredibly compliant and able to adjust the suspension on the go. So what do you get for your money? You just get that hand-built experience, absolute exclusivity. The chances of you actually seeing any one of these two bikes on the road are extremely remote. And that in itself gives people that feeling that they're on something incredibly special. You are going to get people coming up to you, talk to you, asking you about the bike. Their jaw drops and they cannot help but come over. That's bikers and even non-bikers. This thing is special. Envy Augustus you always have been special from the M4 to the Brutale to the Dragsters. Oh, I just wish I could afford one. <laughs> I can afford a Dragster RR, but I can't afford a Brutale RR 1000. Oh, never mind the rush, but uh, well, I'll live in hope one day. But which bike would you actually have? <laughs> I'll tell you what my biggest problem buying this bike is what color to go for. It looks great in the red, but you could argue it looks a bit too much like the Ducati Street Fighter V4S. Whereas in this yellow, it really pops out. So it's black and dark gray and yellow. And I think that's absolutely fabulous. So that would be my first dilemma if I could ever be in a position of affording a bike like this. Oh, it's one of those things. It's not like you go in a Ferrari garage, you kind of go there with intentions to get a Le Mans Blue or a Grigio or a Silver, and you just say at the last minute, go, oh, rather Rosso. You just kind of can't help yourself. But I think that yellow one looks spectacular. And you're not going to see one of these bikes on the street possibly anyway. So it doesn't really matter what colour it is, people are going to flock to the bike and they're going to ask you all sorts of questions about it. I think one of the headline figures that comes out is the 208 horsepower. This could be raised to 212 with a slight remap with the upgraded exhaust system that MV Augusta offer. I mean, that's madness. Uh, I mean, okay, the Ducati Street Fighter V4, V4S has similar horsepower, but surely that's too much. I mean, the fastest speed I've ever done on a bike itself is 181. 
indicated hiding under the cowl of my Fireblade SP2 and you daren't move for being thrown off the bike so I can't imagine you get anywhere close to that on these two bikes despite the stats saying that they go over 300 kilometers an hour it's over 186 miles an hour incredible talking about Ducati it is really the only competitor that's got that exclusivity and power and panache and it's Italian to compete with the MV Augusta Personally, I don't think it competes. I think it looks like a Panagali with the fairing taken off, which of course it is. Whereas these two bikes from Envy Augusta are pretty much bespoke. They look similar to the fantastic Dragster RR, the 800cc version, just with more brutal power. Oh dear, I tell you, they make me, oh, make, they give me goose pimples, make me shiver, make me sigh, make me moan. I just need a loan. Hey, that rhymed. Absolutely stunning bikes. It's just those details that MV Augusta come to. All the little bits and bobs around the brakes and the fairings and the paintwork. The finish is incredible. Anybody who's seen MV Augusta up front, up close, will know just how amazing their finish is. They just go the extra mile with their incredible handmade bike ethos. Just pointing out that the warranty now is three years, so that allays many of the fears that people have about MV Augusta and their reliability. I think those days have gone, so start saving up and bag one of these utter beauties.